the idea that NATO's nuclear umbrella is enough to protect Europe is being seriously questioned with shifts in US foreign policy. While NATO officially guarantees security to its members, the United States, which is the backbone of NATO's defense, has become increasingly unpredictable. In this video, we uncover Sweden's secret nuclear past and its possible future as a nuclear power. Current President Donald Trump openly criticized NATO and even suggested that the US might not defend allies who fail to meet defense spending requirements. In 2018, he reportedly considered withdrawing the US from NATO entirely. Even now, Trump and other conservative leaders argue that NATO is a financial burden on the US. This raises concerns that a future US administration might abandon NATO commitments altogether. Article 5, the alliance's most important rule, states that an attack on one member is an attack on all. However, if American leadership starts questioning its obligations, the entire security structure of Europe could collapse. Moreover, the problem goes beyond political rhetoric. The US is shifting its military focus toward the Pacific, seeing China as the greatest threat. The Pentagon's 2022 National Defense Strategy clearly states that China is America's pacing challenge. In 2023, the US allocated nearly $900 billion to its defense budget, but a significant portion of this is now being used to strengthen its military presence in the Indo-Pacific region. The US has expanded bases in the Philippines, signed new security deals with Japan and Australia, and deployed additional naval forces in the South China Sea. All of this means that Europe may no longer be Washington's top priority. Another major concern is the growing nuclear threats from Russia. Since the war in Ukraine, Moscow has repeatedly threatened the use of nuclear weapons. In 2023, Russian President Vladimir Putin announced that tactical nuclear weapons would be stationed in Belarus, closer than ever to NATO's borders. Russia's nuclear threats aren't just theoretical. It has over 1,500 tactical nuclear warheads designed for battlefield use. This has alarmed European nations, especially those without nuclear weapons. They have relied on the US for protection, but with Washington focused on Asia, confidence in the nuclear umbrella is fading. Some experts argue that Europe must become more independent in its defense strategy. Without guaranteed American protection, a Nordic nuclear alliance might be a real possibility. For Nordic countries like Sweden, relying solely on American nukes for protection could be a fatal mistake. The country wanted tactical nuclear weapons meant only for defensive use against the Soviet Union. Supreme Commander Nils Swedland openly declared in 1954 that Sweden needed the bomb, especially since, unlike NATO members Norway and Denmark, Sweden had no superpower backing. The country had uranium, reactors, and top scientists ready to make it happen. The country built its first reactor, R1, beneath Stockholm's Royal Institute of Technology in 1951. By 1955, Swedish scientists realized they could produce weapons-grade plutonium with just 5 to 10 ki, far less than previously thought. The Marvikan reactor, designed in the late 1950s, was meant to fuel an arsenal of 100 nuclear bombs. Plus, most Swedes, including the ruling Social Democrats, backed the idea. History shows that nuclear promises can be broken, and Russia's growing aggression proves that intimidation works. Ukraine learned this lesson the hard way. In 1994, it gave up its Soviet-era nukes in exchange for security guarantees under the Budapest Memorandum. The US, the UK, and Russia promised to respect Ukraine's borders. But when Russia invaded Crimea in 2014 and then launched a full-scale war in 2022, those guarantees meant nothing. No nukes came to Ukraine's defense. The message to smaller nations is clear. If America won't fight for Kyiv, why would it nuke Moscow for Helsinki or Oslo? The lesson here is simple. Relying on someone else's nukes means trusting their politicians more than your survival. If Nordic nations want real security, they might need to take matters into their own hands before it's too late. One potential situation in this case could be the Nordic Combined Nuclear Program. Sweden's nuclear capabilities are more advanced than most people realize. Right now, Sweden relies on six nuclear reactors to generate 30 to 40 percent of its electricity, burning through 1,500 tons of uranium oxide every year. 
The country plans to double its nuclear capacity by 2045, and that demand could skyrocket to 4,000 tons annually. The big question? Where will all that uranium come from? Hidden in the country's bedrock, Sweden has some of the largest uranium deposits in Europe, locked in formations like Randstad, 1.7 million tons of U-308, and Viken, 756,000 tons. These reserves could power Sweden and much of Europe for decades. Plus, now the government is even moving to lift a ban on uranium mining, signaling a major shift in policy. Beyond nuclear energy, the nation has maintained an independent military capability despite its small size. Saab, Sweden's leading aerospace company, is renowned for its high-tech fighter jets. The Gripen, a cutting-edge multi-role fighter, is operated by multiple countries, including Sweden. The latest version, the Gripen EF, features an advanced engine, ASA radar, and improved electronic warfare capabilities. The aerospace sector employs over 14,000 people and generates more than 2.6 billion annually, with 70% of its products exported worldwide. It shows how Swedish defense technology has become popular in global markets. Furthermore, Saab has developed the latest unmanned systems, airborne early warning platforms like the Global Eye and even components for Airbus and Boeing. GKN Aerospace Sweden produces parts to advanced jet engines, including those powering the Gripen fighter. The company also plays a crucial role in the Ariane 5 rocket program, manufacturing turbines for liquid hydrogen and oxygen propulsion systems. Sweden's government actively supports aeronautical research, with Innovair coordinating national efforts to maintain technological superiority. Programs like Clean Sky 2 and CSAR 2020, supported by the EU, further reinforce Sweden's role in shaping the future of aerospace innovation. Sweden's past missile programs add another layer. During the Cold War, Sweden developed advanced missile systems like the RB04 and RB05. Though officially abandoned, the expertise is there. If Sweden ever chose to weaponize its uranium, it could theoretically revive its missile tech for nuclear delivery. The data shows that Nordic countries have the key ingredients to build nuclear weapons. The country operates six nuclear reactors, providing about 30% of its electricity. These reactors could theoretically produce weapons-grade plutonium if Sweden chose to go that route. Sweden's aerospace industry is another key factor. It builds its fighter jets, the Gripen, and has advanced missile tech, including the RBS-15 anti-ship missile, which could be modified for nuclear delivery. If Poland can order 1,000 tanks and 500 HIMARS, why couldn't Sweden develop a few nukes? Finland, now a NATO member, is no slouch either. It has cutting-edge nuclear research facilities and recently approved two new reactors. More importantly, Finland's military can mobilize 280,000 troops and 870,000 reserves. It also has the most artillery in Europe and is upgrading its air force with F-35s. If Finland ever felt threatened, say, by Russia, it has the know-how to go nuclear quickly. With Norway, it hosts US nuclear sharing agreements under NATO, meaning American nukes could be stationed there in a crisis. Add 52 F-35s, with more coming, and K-9 Thunder howitzers. And Norway has the delivery systems to go nuclear fast. The only missing piece? The warheads. Finally, Denmark is the brain. Its radar and intelligence networks are top tier. The Danish military of 16,000 active troops punches above its weight. The Ivar Hutfeldt class frigates carry SM-2 missiles, and the F-35s on order could drop bombs with precision. Copenhagen's $547 billion defense budget shows it's serious about power projection. Analysts suggest Sweden, Finland, Norway, and Denmark could pool resources, cutting development time by years. Sweden's advanced aerospace and uranium reserves, Norway's heavy water production, and Finland's secure storage sites create a formidable foundation. Estimates from the Stockholm International Peace Research Institute, SPARI, indicate a joint program might field a working warhead in five, seven years, far faster than any single Nordic state could alone. Shared infrastructure, like enrichment plants and missile testing, would slash costs while boosting regional deterrence against an increasingly aggressive Russia. But the risks are huge. 
the US and NATO would likely have questions. The EU, already split on defense, might impose sanctions to stop it. Russia expect cyber attacks, threats, and possible military posturing near Nordic borders. Then there's the legal nightmare. The Non-Proliferation Treaty NPT, bans new nukes, and signing nations like Sweden and Norway would face global condemnation. Yet, with Russia's nuclear saber rattling and doubts over US commitments, some argue the Nordics have no choice. The question isn't just could they, it's would the world let them. So, what do you think? Should Sweden and the Nordic countries take control of their security and develop nuclear weapons? With Russia's aggression and NATO's uncertain future, is relying on the US still a safe bet? Or would a Nordic nuclear alliance only escalate tensions and make the region even more unstable? Drop your thoughts in the comments. Let's see where you stand on this. And if you found this deep dive eye-opening, make sure to like, share, and subscribe for more hard-hitting analyses. Because when it comes to global power struggles, the truth is often buried beneath diplomacy. Stay informed and we'll see you in the next one.